When police reports are not available, newspaper articles are my go-to for information on unsolved homicides and missing persons, especially older cases, when reporters had a lot more access to officials and the cases they were investigating. The first week of reporting is where you will find the most crucial information. Now watch, listen, as we go back in time to keep this unsolved case in the spotlight so the victim's family and friends had the possibility and maybe even the probability of getting resolution and justice in their case. This is their story. Tombstone Weekly Epitaph, July 22nd, 1882. Death of John Ringo. His body found in Morse Canyon. Probable suicide. Sunday evening, intelligence reached the city of the finding of the dead body of John Ringo near the mouth of Morse Canyon in the Chirkawa Mountains on Friday afternoon. There was few men in Cochise County or southeastern Arizona better known. He was recognized by friends and foes as a recklessly brave man who would go any distance or undergo any hardship to serve a friend or punish an enemy. While undoubtedly reckless, he was for from being a desperado. We know of no murder being laid to his charge. Friends and foes were unanimous in the opinion he was strictly honorable man in all his dealings and that his word was as good as his bond. Many people who were intimately acquainted with him in life have serious doubts that he took his own life, while an equally large number say that he frequently threatened to commit suicide, and that event was expected at any time. The circumstances of the case hardly leave any room for doubt as to his self-destruction. He was about 200 feet from water and was acquainted with every inch of the country so that it was almost impossible for him to lose himself. He was found in the midst of a clump of oaks springing from the same stem but diverging outward so as to leave an open space in the center. On top of the main stem and between the spreading boughs was a large stone and on this pedestal he was found sitting, with his body leaning backward and resting against a tree. He was found by a man named John Yost, who was acquainted with him for years, both in this territory and Texas. Yost is working for Sorghum Smith and was employed hauling wood. He was driving a team along the road and noticed a man in the midst of the clump of trees, apparently asleep. He passed on without further investigation, but on looking back, saw his dog smelling of the man's face and snorting. This excited curiosity and he stopped the team and proceeded to investigate. He found the lifeless body of John Ringo with a hole large enough to admit two fingers about halfway between the right eye and ear and a hole correspondingly large on top of his head, doubtless the outlet of the fatal bullet. The revolver was firmly clenched in his hand which is almost conclusive evidence that death was instantaneous. His rifle rested against a tree and one of his cartridge belts was turned upside down. Yost immediately gave the alarm and in about 15 minutes 11 men were on the spot. The subjoined statement was made by the eyewitnesses to coroner Matthews. Turkey or Morse Mill Creek. Statement for the information of the coroner and sheriff of Cochise County, Arizona. There was found by the undersigned John Yost the body of a man in a clump of oak trees about 20 yards north from the road leading to Morse Mills and about a quarter of a mile west of the house of B. F. Smith. The undersigned viewed the body and found it in a sitting posture facing west, the head inclined to the right. There was a bullet hole on the top of the head on the left side. There is, apparently, part of the scalp gone, including a small portion of the forehead and part of the hair. This looks as if cut out by a knife. These are the only marks of violence visible on the body. Several of the undersigned identify the body as that of John Ringo, well known in Tombstone. He was dressed in light hat, blue shirt, vest, pants, and drawers. On his feet were a pair of hose and undershirt torn up so as to protect his feet. He had evidently 
traveled but a short distance in his footgear. His revolver he grasped in his right hand, his rifle resting against the tree close to him. He had on two cartridge belts, the belt for revolver cartridges being buckled on upside down. The undernoted property was found with him and on his person. One Colt revolver, caliber 45, number 222, containing five cartridges. One Winchester rifle, octagon barrel, caliber 45. Model 1876, number 21896, containing a cartridge in the breech, 10 in the magazine. One cartridge belt, containing nine rifle cartridges. One cartridge belt, containing two revolver cartridges. One silver watch of American Watch Company, number 9339, with silver chain attached. Two dollars and sixty cents in money. Six pistol cartridges in pocket. Five shirt studs. One small pocket knife. One tobacco pipe. One comb. One block matches. One small piece tobacco. There is also a portion of a letter from Messer, Hefford, and Zabriskie, attorneys at law, Tucson, to the deceased. John Ringo. The above property is left in the possession of Frederick Ward, teamster between Morse Mills and Tombstone. The body of deceased was buried close to where it was found. When found deceased, man had been dead about 24 hours. Thomas White, John Blake, John Bradford, B.F. Smith, A.E. Lewis, A.S. Neighbors, James Morgan, Robert Boulder, Frank McKinney, W.J. Dow, J.C. McCray, John Yost, Fred Ward. From Fred Ward, who arrived in the city on Sunday evening, an epithet reporter learned that the general impression prevailing among people in Chirkawa is that his horse wandered off somewhere and he started off on foot to search for him, that his boots began to hurt him and he pulled them off and made moccasins of his undershirt. He could not have been suffering for water as he was within 200 feet of it and not more than 700 feet from Smith's house. Miss Morris and Mrs. Young passed by where he was lying Thursday afternoon but supposed it was some man asleep and took no further notice of him. The inmates of Smith's house heard a shot about 3 o'clock Thursday evening, and it is more than likely that is the time the rash deed was done. He was on an extended jamboree the last time he was in the city, and only left here 10 days ago. He had dinner at Dials in the South Pass of the Dragoons one week ago last Sunday, and went from there to Galeysville, where he kept on drinking heavily. We have not heard of his whereabouts after leaving Galeysville, but it is more than likely that he went to Morse Canyon. He was subject to frequent fits of melancholy and had an abnormal fear of being killed. Two weeks ago, last Sunday, in conversing with this writer, he said he was certain of being killed and he was of being living then. He said he might run along for a couple of years more and may not last two days. He was born in Texas and is very respectable connected. He removed in San Jose, California when about 16 years old and Colonel Coleman Younger, one of the leading citizens of that town, is his grandfather. Ringo was a second cousin to the Taman's younger brother, now in the Minnesota Penitentiary for their partnership with the James Boys. He has three sisters in San Jose, of whom he was passionately fond. He was about 38 years old, though looking much younger, was a fine specimen of physical manhood. Many friends will mourn him, and many others will take secret delight in learning of his death. If you or someone you know has information on this case, please contact your local authorities or contact me, Detective Ken Maines, at www.kenmaines.com. And remember, it's not about the prosecution or the defense. It's about the truth. But I have got no